Welcome to a new Affinity Designer tutorial. In this video, we will create a vectorial emoji using a low quality, highly pixelated image. I recently started using Affinity Photo and Designer and I thought this tutorial would be a good practice. So this is the low quality JPEG file that I got off the internet, and that's the one that we're going to use as a template. So I'm opening Designer. I'm going to open that JPEG. So first we're going to create a palette using the two main colors of our template. Click on Swatches. On the right hand side, choose Add Document Palette. Name it. I gave it Wink Palette as a name. Click on Color Selector. Keep your finger pressed down on your mouse while you select the color. Click on the color you've selected and it now becomes the main color. Click on that little icon and that adds that color to your palette. Now choose the yellow color at the bottom of the picture and add it to your palette in the same way. On the left, choose the Ellipse tool. Start from the center and keep pressing on Command and Shift as you go. That will keep the proportions identical. Release Command and Shift and adjust as you need to. Then rename the layer. Choose the Gradient tool. Select your colors. That's your first color. Notice that we've saved that in our palette, so go to Swatches and then select the first color, orange in our case. Then select the second color and select that yellow one. Hide the layer and then put it back in just to make sure that the color and the size is correct. We now need to create that little uh, gradient on the outside of the circle. Click on the little FX icon, that's the layer effect, and then select Inner Glow. Choose the orange color of our palette, increase the radius and intensity. Oh yeah, uh, change the blend mode to normal, otherwise you wouldn't see it. And then uh, play with the radius a little, then you can see how it looks. And then choose, uh, well, you know, adjust it to your liking. So that doesn't look too bad. Okay, so now we're gonna focus on that little uh, reflection shape. Select the crescent tool. Draw the shape. Position that shape more or less over our template. Okay, so now we have it. We need to add a gradient. Choose a color. We're gonna get white as the first color. And then transparent as a second color, so to speak. So the opacity would be zero. Now here we can adjust where the gradient is actually happening. But it's a little too intense, so we're gonna turn down the opacity to 75%. Now we can take a look to compare with our model. It looks pretty good. So rename the crescent as, I don't know, a white reflection is what I get named it. Select layers, and now we're gonna focus on one of the feature of the face. There is like four or five of them. Five. Yeah, the eyebrows, uh, the eyes, and the mouth. So again, we are going to pick the two main color. There is a dark brown and then there is a lighter brown. It's the same process as what we've done earlier with the orange and the yellow. And it's very useful because then we don't need to reselect those colors each time. All right, so let's work on this one. We're gonna need to create a shape, so I'm gonna take a crescent tool. It's easier to start with a shape that is uh, somehow resemblant to the shape you're trying to achieve. Click on convert to curves. Click then on the knot tool, and that would help you to adjust the shape to fit exactly what you need. So I fast forward that part, but then here, if you don't want it to snap, Hold on the Alt or Option key, and then you can move it freely. To be sure that you're okay, it's, it's a good idea to uh, reduce the opacity. That way you can see by transparency if the edges are 
uh, correctly aligned. Rename the layer. Change the gradient color. Remember, we saved those two in our palettes. So color one would be the light brown color and the darker brown as a second color. If you get it wrong, like I did, you can reverse the color. Adjust the gradient. In Select the, the effects of the layer. Blend mode on normal. Increase the radius and intensity. Change the color to a darker brownish. When you're satisfied, just hit close. So now because we're going to duplicate um, that layer four or five times, it becomes useful to save those parameters as a style. So now we have the layer uh, selected and then from that selection, we create a style. All right, now we're gonna do the eye. For that, you would use a circle shape. You don't need to maintain command or shift there because you don't need to have the same dimensions. You can use the face feature as you've seen, and now straight away we have the right color and the inner glow that is applied to that, uh, to that circle. Rename it. Okay, now let's move on to the other shape. It's probably easier to grab a shape that we've already done and then adjust it. To copy a shape without having to duplicate it, you just um, select it and hit command. And then as you drag it, it creates another shape. Finally, we repeat the same process with um, the mouth, which is I think the last feature, face feature for that icon. Now we're gonna add all the face feature in one group. Select them all, right click, and select group or command G. Rename the group. Now we're gonna create a duplicate to that group. So right click, duplicate, command J. Let's rename the lower one, so the one that is underneath the first one. That's the one we're gonna work on. Let's select one of them, which we'll use as a template. Uncheck the main face so we can use by transparency the background as a model. Press the V key on your keyboard to select the move tool. And resize it to roughly match. It'd be easier to reduce the opacity so we can see what we're doing. To try to closely match what is behind. Just roughly put the opacity back to 100. Obviously, we're going to need to change this to a light yellow. That should do. Now we still have that inner glow that we need to get rid of. So select the layer effect and remove the inner glow. We're going to need to add a bit of Gaussian blur. So select Gaussian blur and add to 0.4. Reduce the opacity to 75. Toggle to the export persona to see what it looks like. That's not too bad, that's more or less what we're trying to do. Let's go back in the draw persona. Go in style and we're gonna add that as a new style. Click on the right hand side and select add style from selection. Rename it. So now we're gonna apply that same style to all of those new ones that we've created. So you can't see them now hidden behind the other layers. Select them one by one and readjust their size so that it matches exactly what you're trying to do. There you have it. We had a highly pixelated image that we transform into a vector format, which means that you can now zoom in as much as you want without any pixel and export it to any size or use any type of the feature, any type of the layers in software such as uh, After Effects or Final Cut Pro. 
So for example, if you want a really, really large one, I could create a new one. Um, yeah, 1200 pixel by 1200 pixel, DPI 300. And then you select those three, copy them. And you can paste them here.